Hey, 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 awesome people. Hello, welcome. Mr. C here. Super pumped you've joined us again for our whole number multiplication unit. This video today going to be working on the fourth grade standard. So let me show you the standards first and then we'll jump into some problems. So here we go. Here is the common core standard on the screen. Notice it's talking about multiplying four digit numbers by one digit whole numbers. So that's what we're gonna be working on. And also it says multiplying two digit numbers as well. So working on some of that stuff. Again, I am in Missouri right now, so I put the Missouri learning standards there there as well. They are very, very similar, okay? Want to point out a couple things. One, as always, subscribe. Join us on this math journey. We get more and more excited the more people that join us. The big thing I always talk about, you know, is welcome. You know, thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. So subscribe so you know when a video drops. Also, if you didn't have a chance to watch the fifth grade multiplication standards, I will drop the link to it in the description below. So make sure you check that out as well. Third grade standard, this multiplication standard will be coming out soon as well. I'll also put it in the descriptions below. That way you can access it because again, it's really important to see how multiplication builds upon itself. We're gonna go from the third, the fourth, and the fifth grade standard, all right? So with all that being said, let's jump into some problems today. All right, here we go. First problem of the day is 168 times Seven And before we get started on this, I just want to remind us, I talk about every video, having the right mindset when you do math. You need to have a growth mindset. Be okay with struggling, okay? Be okay with a challenge. Be okay with making mistakes. Use your mistakes to help you get better. Watch this video multiple times. Try new problems. Do things like that. But if you have the right mindset of being okay with a challenge, being okay with making mistakes, this stuff will come to you, all right? It's all about practice, it's all about trying it, it's all about giving it your best shot, all right? And that's what we're gonna do today. So, let's jump into it. I'm gonna kinda show you two ways to do this problem. I'm gonna start off using what we call the area model. Uh, area model is something that more and more teachers and more and more students are using because it's a great strategy to get people interested in multiplication, but to really give them the confidence in knowing what they're doing. So. Area model, we're gonna set it up here. So to set up this area model, I am going to draw, and students like to call it a window, sometimes they call it a square or a rectangle. It's really up to you, however you wanna break it apart. All right, so hopefully you've seen area models before. If not, here we go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this number, 168, and break it into different chunks. We're going to separate it by its place values, just like you've done in previous grades. So here we go. We've got 100. So I'm going to take 100 out of there. Then I've got six tens. So that's 60. And then I've got eight one, so I'm gonna put an eight here. And I always put a small addition symbol here just so that way I can keep track of it because 168 is the same thing as 100 plus 60 plus eight. It's just a nice little strategy, help you not lose any of those numbers. In our second part of the problem, we have the number seven. So this seven, we have seven ones. We're gonna write it over here on the side because that's what we're multiplying by, all right? So this is a strategy I always teach students because I think it's a really good strategy to kind of help them uh, not make a mistake to be able to keep track of what they're multiplying and how they're multiplying it. I want you to touch this number on the side. So touch this number and say it seven. Touch the middle of this box and say multiplication, or excuse me, not multiplication, multiply seven times seven times and then touch this number up top which is a hundred and say it so watch this seven times 100 again seven times 100 listen you probably know what that is off the top of your head but if you don't something you do already know is you know what seven times one is seven times one is seven 
and there's two zeros that we can attach. So you've got 700. Now over here, we're gonna do seven times 60. Seven times 60. Again, I don't know my 60s times tables. You may, if so, congratulations. But if not, there's a little bit of a strategy we have, a little, a little cheat code in a way. Seven times six is 42, and we can attach one zero, and that gives us 420. Lastly, in this last box, we have seven times eight. Seven times eight is 56. And notice we have our area model completely filled in. This next step, though, is really, really a challenge for a lot of people. And it's not because they don't know what to do. It's that they just make a small mistake. And let me show you what that mistake is. Notice I'm taking these numbers that we already have, these products that we already have, because I've got to get the total product. Because right now, we only know what 7 times 100 is, 7 times 60 is, and 70 times, or excuse me, 7 times 8 is. We're not quite sure what 7 times this whole chunk, 168. In order to find that, we've got to add up all of these numbers inside our area model. So that's what I'm doing. I always write it from greatest to least. So I have 700, I have 420, and now I need to write 56. And I just want to slow down for a moment because this is where students and teachers usually make their mistake because they just get to go in so fast. And we're just like, oh my gosh, Mr. C, I'm kicking butt over here. I'm flying through this. I mean, I'm dominating this multiplication. And I tell students all the time, yeah, you are. You're doing great. Now, don't make a mistake adding. Don't make a mistake in the last steps. Because what will happen, I'll change colors to red so you can see it better. A lot of times students will put 56 and they'll put it over here. What's the problem with that? What do you notice is their mistake? So their mistake is that they didn't put the values in the correct place value columns. All right, they put the five in the hundreds place value. Okay, that's not gonna work out for us. And that's usually what happens. So make sure you write down your numbers in the correct place values, write them neatly. And now let's take our time and add correctly. Here we go. Add the ones column, that gives us six. The tens column gives us seven. And the hundreds column gives us 11 and we're getting a final answer of 1,176. Take a look at this problem. Watch this part of, this, of the video again if you need to. Ask yourself, where am I making a mistake? What doesn't make sense? Where am I stuck at? Watch the video again and then try the next problem with us because again, a growth mindset means that you're okay with struggling, you're okay with making mistakes because you may not know something, but you just don't know it yet. And it's all about that yet piece. Keep working at it, we're gonna get it, all right? Take a look at it, pause the video, watch it again if you need to, then we got our next problem. All right, so I wanna show you the other strategy for solving this type of problem. We just solved this using area model. Now let's solving it, solve this problem using standard algorithm, which is the way so many people have learned and it's one of those things that you need to get to the point where you can multiply it like this. And I tell students all the time, find one way that you get really good at multiplying and master it and then challenge yourself to find a second way to multiply. And so standard algorithm, here we go. Here's how we're gonna do it. We've got our problem, 168 times seven. First thing we're gonna do is multiply straight up. So we're gonna do seven times eight. And seven times eight equals 56. So I'm putting the six here and I am having to carry and regroup the five above the 60, or excuse me, the tens place. Now we're gonna do seven times six. And I want you to remember that when we're doing the seven times six here, what that technically means is that we're doing six, excuse me, seven times 60, okay? That's technically what we're doing in this problem. But just like I showed you on area model, you can ignore that zero and just do seven times six and worry about it later, okay? So I just wanna make sure you know that. So we're doing seven times six, that gives us 42 plus the five 
gives us 47, so a 7 goes there, and regroup that 4, boom. I always mark out whatever I've used, because if I don't, I'll cause myself all types of problems, so that's what I always do. Lastly, we need to multiply 7 times 100, and we know that 7 times 1 is 7. Let's add 4 to it, 8, 9, 10, 11 and it looks like we're getting an answer of 1,176. Great news for us, that's exactly what we got when we did the area model, okay? Both strategies gave us the same answer. Really important that you know how to do both ways. Uh, I always suggest learning it area model first and then moving into the standard algorithm. All right, so there's our first problem got one more for you here we'll jump into it watch it again if you need to and then let's do one more problem together all right second problem for us here we've got 2165 times 4 going to do the area model first so go ahead and set up your area model see if you can do it without any of my help and then we'll kind of do it together here so here we go, we've got 2,165. I'm gonna break this number apart just like you've done in previous grades and we just did in the last problem. Take a look at the thousands place value. We've got 2,000. So if we've got 2,000, I'm gonna put 2,000 here. Break this up. Whoops, that's better. All right, next we've got 100. You know, I did not give myself enough room. There we go. So we've got 100. We've got 60. And we've got 5. Did not leave myself much room. All right. Again, I always put a small addition symbol here because it helps me keep track of all of the work I've done. 2,000 plus 100 plus 60 plus 5. If you add all that up together, ding, 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 you get 2,165, which is what we have to make sure we have. Over here, we are multiplying by four ones. So let's break this one apart and get into it. Here we go. So. 2,000 times 4, so 4 times 2,000. Hey, here's some great news. If you don't have your 2,000 times tables memorized, you don't have to have it memorized. All right, let me show you what I'm talking about. 4 times 2 is 8. Attach three zeros. Boom. You got 8,000, just like that. Now we're going to do 4 times 100. 4 times 100 is 400. 4 times 60, well, 4 times 6 is 24, attach a 0, that gives us 240. And lastly, we've got 4 times 5, 4 times 5, which is 20. Oh, man, here's the good part. Here's where we can't make a mistake. Let's slow down and make sure we write these down correctly. So I've got 2,000. 2,000, see, I already made a mistake right there at the beginning. All right, here we go. 8,000. Whew. Told you it's easy to make a mistake here. All right, 400. 240. Notice I'm writing them from least, or excuse me, greatest to least. All right, make sure I got them all correctly. I've got 8,000, 400, 240, 20. Let's add them up, see what our final answer is. Add the ones column. That gives us zero. Add the tens column. That gives us six. Add the hundreds column, that gives us six. Add the thousands column, that gives us eight. And it looks like we're getting a final answer of 8,008, excuse me, 8,660. I'm going to do standard algorithm as well so you can see that aspect of it. So pause this video, watch this part of it again if you need to, and then I'll give you standard algorithm. All right, here we go, standard algorithm. Same exact problem we just did. Let's see how we do with this one. Give it a shot on your own if you want to and then watch the video and do it alongside me. Or if you're stuck, 
that is perfect. Watch me. All right. Go through it with me. Ask yourself questions. Where are you making a mistake? Where are you stuck at? Let's do it. First things first, let's do four times five. Four times five is 20. There we go. Next, we're going to do four times six because technically we're doing four times 60. Four times six is 24 plus two is 26. Got to re regroup and all of that. Notice I always mark out what I've used. Next, we're going to do 4 times 100. 4 times 100. Well, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. So that's where we got our 600 from. Mark that out. And lastly, we're going to do 4 times 2,000. Well, 4 times 2 is 8. And look at our answer, ladies and gentlemen. Our final answer is 8,660. Did we get the same answer on area model? Yes, we did. Both strategies are giving us the same answer. Again, I just want to point out, if you were stuck, if you were confused, if you were struggling, watch the video again. Give it another try. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Don't be afraid of the challenge. Thanks for tuning in. Got some more videos dropping for you soon. Click subscribe so you'll know when new ones are posted. Mr. C, out.